very, very beautiful in here right now. So that was a little boy. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome to my. <laughs> this is gonna cost. This is in the lobby. How do people get in my room? <laughs> this will be one hundred and twenty dollars, by the way. I take <laughs> checks, Mastercard. Okay. What's up, Seattle? I love your city. <laughs> thank you. That's what I said. Thank you for having me. I love it up here. We love you. Love you. Are you so obvious? I was in Vancouver with uh, Stargate and. Uh... <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But um. You know, Canada. Hey. What? I come to America. Canada's nice this time of year. I just crossed that border. It's not here. I love it down here, so <laughs> thank you, Seattle. All right. All right, Canadians. So how does it work? I'll do a couple minutes with you, get some questions in, and then we'll open it up for audience Q&A. I know they have a lot to ask you, so we're just going to break down your childhood first. No. Uh, I want to talk first about Game of Thrones, because I think uh, I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan. There's a couple Game of Thrones fans in the audience. War is coming. Cal Drogo. Woo! Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, <laughs> you mentioned it took you seven months to get that part. Yeah, they did not want to cast me. <laughs> but, but you made them. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was funny, the casting process on that, because I think it was like one of the first people in. And, and then literally like four months went by, five months, and I was like, whatever happened with that? And, like, oh, you're, you're at the top of the list. I was like, thanks, I didn't know anything about that. And so I went back in, and they, I found out that they went to Morocco, they went to New Zealand, they obviously, every, most of the cast members were from England and Ireland, so they wanted to cast everyone over there. And Peter Dinklage was the first person that was signed on, so um, they just didn't want the Americans. But so I showed them. <laughs> so it was between you. I'm the baddest in the world. <laughs> It was between you and Steve Urkel for the part. Yes. You had a little more muscle mass. A little. Thank Christ. <laughs> and you took him out. So you get the part, they tell you, guess what? You're Cal Drogo. <laughs> yep, okay, good, good. Looks something like that. <laughs> how, long, <laughs> how long were you on set for? You know what, same thing. I was the first one there and the last one to leave. Because I was from the States, um, they only bought it's only one ticket going there, and they one way ticket. One way, and they're like, "You're not going home until the end." And I was like, "Guys, I'm not shooting for like two months. It's good to feed me. <laughs> it's expensive." For DM and the hotel, you might as well send me home. So I got to go home, which was great, and um, for, for like a month and a half. But it was like a seven, you know, six six months or something. Wow. In Ireland, Belfast, and then we went to the Malta. Uh, the, originally, the first pilot we did was we went to Morocco. So I got to go to a lot of cool places. With and did you meet George R. R. Martin on set? Yeah. Did you say, could you finish those last couple books for us, friend? Don't you go dying on me. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> We're going to be very angry. He looks like he's having too much fun right now. You die. Drogo's coming back. I know that. Right? <laughs> I did wonder, like, are you pitching, like, what about Drogo flashbacks? Oh, man, I pitch all kinds of stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I wish I wish Drogo could come back, but we always, I always mess with Amelia. I'd be like... Yeah, you don't know, George told me I'd be making jokes like, Drogo's a dragon. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Look at the dragon. That's awesome. I would buy that. The sun sets in the east. You know, and I just <laughs> do the whole thing, and she's like, really? You're a dragon? I'm like, oh, is she, you're so cute. Is she gullible? Is she, she's she's a gullible and cute, yeah. Cute as a bunny. All right, fair enough. You learned Dothraki. How's your Dothraki right now? Could you tell me? That's very scary. <laughs> You're very fluent still. It's beautiful. Yeah, no, I can't have a conversation with anyone, but yeah. <laughs> you need to find the other Dothraki people. What's that? You need to find the other Dothraki people. I do need to find the other Dothraki people. I just met the guy, Dan, who uh, made the language, and he is just the sweetest. He literally is... He's a very tiny guy, he's very soft-spoken, and he knows like seven to fifteen different languages. And uh, he was a Berkeley linguistic. I thought he was going to Berkeley. And uh, it's kind of like German slash Arabic mm -hmm. kind of design. And um, I met him and it was just, the, I met him at the premiere for Game of Thrones season two, which is, you know, Good. Oh yeah. Yeah. You guys are, yeah, you guys are gonna love it. Uh, I met him there and it was just, he, he was, um, I got the audio tapes, like, or the like, little CDs or MP3 stuff where it would be his voice and I just always, his voice would sound like you, and all of a sudden he would act it, be like, <laughs> 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 
I kind of took my inspiration from him. He's really good at the one song. He's just like the smallest little meek guy. And but inside, he's a Dothraki he's warlord. He's a badass, yeah, man. But he's super cool. I just met him, and uh, anyways. Well, like, my big event for the day is like, hey, I'm on a microwave a pizza. This guy's creating a language? Like, that's what he does? That's what he does, yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. No one knows what I'm screwing up, but I'm not. It's but perfect. It's perfect. It's <laughs> but it really helped the character, too. I mean, I mean, when I did the audition, it was like it broke, like, broke English. You're like trying to spin. It doesn't make sense why I would. You did the hot cut during your audition. Yeah. <laughs> All blacks. Oh, no nice. bust out a hot cut on you. Believe that. Um, yeah, because in the book, obviously, he doesn't speak. He doesn't have the most speaking part, so I thought. And there's no, there's actually no scenes where he gets to go to battle. And I was really bummed about that because I'd love to see Drogo go to battle. And I yeah. was like, well, this is what he would look like if you messed with him. So I like did the hawk and I just thought it'd be a good representation of and with faces like this. I think I read an anecdote where you said your first day on set you were trying to go over Dothraki with someone and the script supervisor said, Good luck with all that. You're on your own. Yeah. Like what are they paying those people for? I know. <laughs> they did um Yeah, it was pretty interesting because when I showed up at the table read, um you know, there's all of the fifty characters there, we're all meeting and the writers come up and like We've got this great idea. We're gonna we have this language being created, and I'm like, oh, cool. So that, that, that sounds great. And like, cause it's kind of silly for a girl to come to this tribe and everyone learns English. You know, 500,000 people learn English, and you know, and she doesn't learn Dothraki. So that's why they designed it. And I was kind of like, cool. Can I see the language? And then I look at it. and I'm like, we're real like arithmetic and we're learning mathematics. It's like I'm screwed. And uh, I don't even speak in that language. I speak American. That's it. But he speaks that very well. I speak 100 yeah. percent American. Very fluent. And uh, so it, it, I, I saw the language. I had like a month to learn it. So I just like locked myself in the hotel room and with Guinness and pizza. And just like learned that shit. It's like learning like a crazy hip hop song kind of. With Guinness and pizza, you could probably learn anything. Yes. You could have been a physicist. You could have. Been and then physicist. I turned into Drogo. It just got bigger and bigger. Angrier and angrier. You mentioned you've never gotten to play in a romantic comedy, but you would like to. I mean, I don't want to put any limitations on anything. You know, Here's an idea I want to pitch to you right now. Spin-off. Cal Drogo rom-coms. <laughs> I mean, that could work. I want it. <laughs> That's huge. That's a billion dollar idea right there. Uh, you also mentioned you're a huge fan of Clint Eastwood. Your favorite Clint Eastwood film. Go. High Plains Drifter. Wow. I thought you were going to go with one of the more, you know, Dirty Harry. No. Old school, okay, I dig it. You want to talk a little uh, Stargate? Let's talk a little Stargate. Yeah. Can you start getting I need a Kleenex, so is there a over here? I got a napkin here for you. Right. Not too? I mean, I could make so Kleenex out of it. When you're on stage, you're going to summon stuff. It's wonderful. There it is. Oh, yeah. That's the real thing right there, people. Oh, yeah. Camera, am I good? Yeah, it's, okay. it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Jesus, what's happening? So this was the show where the dreadlocks almost killed you. Yes. <laughs> I loved them, but man, they got heavy. Very 10 pounds of dreadlocks. Yeah, if it was wet, they were probably 12 pounds. <laughs> so talk, you were on the show for, is it five years? Is that right? Five four. seasons? Oh, four seasons. That's four right. seasons, yeah. Do you still keep in touch with the cast? I do. I try not to, but I do. <laughs> it's, uh, Don't return text, change your number. David definitely know. <laughs> okay. Uh, Little did. Uh, I, I stay in touch with them. Uh, Rachel, I'm really close to. My wife and her are very close. And then Flanagan, he lives really close to me, but we just, uh, we're actually developing a show together that we're going to take it pretty soon. But he's definitely one of my best friends. And Paul McGillian, unfortunately, he's up in Kansas. I don't see him that much, but. So you were on set there, what, three, four months a year up in Vancouver? Well, eight. Eight months. Why are they episodes. so slow? Huh? Why are they so slow at filming? 22 episodes. <laughs> that's a lot, man. Uh, that's true. Yeah. I think it was like eight, yeah. It's back when they used to try hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you miss about Stargate Atlantis? <laughs> what do I miss about Stargate the most? Yeah. You know what, I laughed. I mean, not that I don't laugh now, but I, I really had the greatest time, like what you see on the on the screen in the show. It truly is, we were all best friends, and like, we had a really great time. And I guess I miss hanging out with my friends and laughing. And you get paid for it, you know? it's not a bad job. We'll get into Conan a little, and, and then Ronan, we'll actually, over. Ronan, the, the great thing is, like, Ronan got me, obviously. Conan. It's not that far of a stretch, but they're different. But, you know, um, he was just so much fun to play, man. 
Yeah. Yeah. Rhino was really a badass. I love, I love fighting him. You only play badasses, though. I know, I'm really nice. I'm really <laughs> I don't nice. believe yeah. it. Not for a second. <laughs> Funny, I smile. <laughs> See? Yeah. I can laugh. <laughs> uh, so, Conan the Barbarian. Weird, because you hate horses, evidently. You have a... A vendetta. I don't hate them. They just don't like me, and so I mean, it's, <laughs> they don't have a good relationship. It's a mutual thing. I think I scare them. Now, how many times have you fallen off a horse? Would you say? Uh, at least six. You wow. know what? I, even I did a commercial a long time ago, and I got bucked off, and it took off in downtown LA, and I'm like, no reins, no saddles, all barebacks. I mean, I know how to ride them, but they just. I think what you're supposed to do, based on the movies, is punch them in the nose, and then they respect you. That's I saw that I think those were camels. They listen to them. Please do not punch horses. That is not allowed. He said it, man. <laughs> no, no <joke>. Get him. <laughs> I love horses. They never buck me off. Uh, I read that you have no television and no email. How are we going to be best friends? Go. We're not. Uh, <laughs> just like that. The layers peeled back. Um, yeah, I don't... Uh... I don't have a cell phone either. I'm using my buddies. He, he travels with me and my business partner. We're shooting a movie together, but he has a phone, so you know what? I need to get in touch with my family. I can't. Yeah, but if I don't you could like get away it. with not having a phone and having a wife, that would be impressive. Yeah. That would make you a true badass. <laughs> so, and then as far as TV, I got two kids running around. It's like if I have any spare time, I want to play guitar or, you know, just hang out with my friends. So I just, uh, we do, we are obsessed. My wife is obsessed with Game of Thrones. So, we do have a computer. She has a computer where we, uh, you know, we'll watch. Uh, we HBO Go. We'll sure, watch it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And you read all the whole series, I think, right? I read the first. I read the first uh, book. I didn't. Well, after I died, I was like, Oh, it gets crazy. It gets crazy. <laughs> but I'm real. I watch it. <laughs> sure. There's some great surprises, man. There's some good stuff. I boycott your series because I died in it. It's been <laughs> no, I love it. <laughs> you grew up rock climbing. I read. Yeah, it's my sport. Can you still, if we had a rock right here, can you climb that thing? Oh yeah. Alright. I'm not gonna test you. Get a rock right here. There it is. <laughs> Bring out the rock! If a rock rose right there, what would you do? I mean, you'd be impressed, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would gain a little stature. You'd get an email address. You would have some stature. There we go. Alright. Uh, last question. Bullet to the head. Awesome. You got to train with Navy SEALs? Yeah, well, I trade, it's not with Navy SEALs. So there's one guy that was a, a Navy SEAL, but mostly 87 11. All the guys that designed Co or Conan, they, they basically did it. So, um, yeah, and it's awesome. It's Sylvester Stallone is. Yeah, it's you like a dream come true to work with Rocky. I'm like, dude, I'm a huge, huge, huge. So little by little, you're knocking off like every icon who was a badass before you and like to become the ultimate badass. I'm trying. Like, who's left on the list? Who's left on the list? How did you tell me? Uh, I think you should go for Drago. Huh? I love Drago. Yeah, Drago Dolph Lundgren. Lundgren. He's... No, no, Drago. Dolph Lundgren. Oh, yeah, he's a badass. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> tough to beat. So, I think that comes out, what, later this year? Well, it was, yeah, it was supposed to come out in April, and I think they're pushing it until after Expendables. Oh, okay. Walter Hill so is amazing, and Sarah Shelby. And, yeah, it's, it's a great cast. Christian Slater. Do we have audience questions yet? Because I could go on forever. Doesn't matter. If audience have questions, I don't know how it works, but the people with the thing, the deal. Are you there? While we were backstage, you were trying to buy a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> so I love guitars. I'm obsessed with it. Was this like an old school guitar? Or? It is. It's like 1968, I think. But this might, uh, Seattle's pretty special because the first time I ever um, bought a guitar was here. It's Emerald City, and I go back there. And Hendrix? Hendrix, man. Uh, he can play a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah, I was looking for a guitar. You, are you going to get that guitar? I know you were hemming and all. Is this going to be on the internet? Then no, I'm not getting a guitar. <laughs> and you cannot find it. No, I'm not getting it, honey. <laughs> the Why first are you asking me a question? <laughs> gotcha. The next question. Well, it was audience. only a dollar, which I thought was a really good deal for guitar. It was guitar. a good deal. Yeah, a dollar is a really good deal for guitar. Give it away up here. <laughs> what kind of music do you listen to? Uh, my favorite uh, artist is probably Tom Waits. Uh, I love Tom Waits. <laughs> Um, weirdly, compared to that, I also love Ani DeFranco. Uh, Tom Waits and Chumba Wumba, my two favorite. <laughs> and, uh, you know, blues. Anything? I just love the blues. Like how old blues, though? Sun House is my introduction to, to the blues. Sun House and Robert Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Skip James. So, um, yeah. And Black Keys right now. I've been listening to a lot of Black Keys. Black Keys. That's great. I can just barely see, I can see like bright lights everywhere. Is there an audience question, member? Or should I just keep riffing? I see your, I see your hand. Yes, good, good job. Hi, Jason. 
Um, so a couple weeks ago, the guy you were talking about who developed the Dothraki language was doing a Q&A &A session online. And uh, he was asked about how the different actors did with their Dothraki. And for you, he said that uh, you did something interesting. You changed a, a portion of the pronunciation. And uh, it wasn't the way he intended it, but you did it completely, like, every time. And so it turned into sort of a, a regional dialect. That's how the way he saw it. So, was that on purpose, or...? There's some things that just couldn't wrap my tongue around. Like, it's like, that sounded horrible, but there's, um, like, there's like this... There's also, like that's weird... awesome. I'm self-editing myself. Um, <laughs> where it's like this... Uh, I don't even know how to do it, that's why I didn't do it. And um, it's like this, like, oh, like something deep down in your throat. It's really sounding bad. Um, but it was just really hard to do, and uh, so I was like, fucking, I'm king, dude. <laughs> Who's gonna say shit to me? It's good to be king. Thanks. I think we have one over here, or it's a light, either way. Hi, Jason. Hi. Um, I just. I first want to say to you that I absolutely love you, and <laughs> you, you and Lisa are just the most beautiful couple. Thank you very much. Um, my question for you is this, if you could play any character in science fiction or fantasy, who would that be? <laughs> um, who would I want to play? And you know what, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so... And I'm such, I like the baddies for some reason. I mean, I like Vader because he doesn't do this or that, but I'm like, Darth Maul was such a badass. He didn't say anything, though. There you go again. I'm not saying anything. Han Solo. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Do I just alternate? Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, sure. Hi. Um. Oh. <laughs> We're breaking stuff. That's what I do at my house. So, yes, I put my feet up on the table and. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so again, I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming out. The first time I saw you come on screen, it was like a miracle from heaven. So thank you. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm blushing. <laughs> um, so I did read online ahead of time that you did do Hakka. And I wanted to know, uh, I've done a little bit of Hakka before and Polynesian dance. So I wanted to know just for reference, what Hakka did you do when you were uh, auditioning? You know what? I don't know which one I did on those. I only know three, so I can't remember. I, it's on the. I think it's on the DVD thing. Did you see it? I didn't yet, but I will. It should be on there. <laughs> did anyone know it's on there? Has anyone seen it? Could you? Is there any way you could just do just a bit of it? I, <laughs> Here's the thing, here's the thing. I would love to, and I'll tell you why I'm not going to. But it really has a good, it, there's a, I'll, I'll give you a beautiful story that means a lot to me. And I'll try to do it properly, not sitting down like a lazy ass. Um, I went to my cousin's funeral, and uh, he was 26 when he passed, and he left two children behind, and he fell asleep at the wheel going to get off work late, and he, uh, I won't get too much, but anyway, he, uh, he uh, passed away, went back to the funeral, and he was a big football player and um, from Hawaii. And uh, I was at the funeral, and we were putting him in the grave, we're lowering him down, and his, all his brothers, all his friends, and people he went to school with, they're all doing the haka. And it's something that's reserved for something so special, and not to be like, you know, only in desperate need, like when you need a job, would I do it? It's like, yeah, I've done it before and it's just like, it's such a sacred thing to me that that is the only reason why because when I watch these guys do it, I've never seen, um, like, these fierce men, like, actually, like, tears squirting out of their eyes and so much pain and, like, and it means a lot, you know, like, I, that's why I wanted to put a little bit of it in the Satita, too. It's like, it's just, you can call it on your ancestors. There's just a lot of power to it that you can bring in and it's, it's, it's scary and it's, you, and transform your soul and like pull down some serious stuff. So I don't like to do it because it's so special to me. And then back. Anyways. Thank you for that. I haven't told anyone that. So I feel special about that. We, we actually probably wouldn't survive your hot though. So I think this is a good choice. Yeah, I know. If I do the hot I'm going to get pissed and all that. I lock the door. And of course, I'm the one closest. I'll be, I'll be dead first. Fantastic. Go ahead. Hi. I have a 
a two-part question, if I may. The first leads into the second. The first is um, <clears throat> on Atlantis. Ronan's allowed to join the team because he has a military background, sort of specifically discussed. Yet it seemed like Ronan was more of a, a tribal warrior type. Was that driven more by you or by the show creators? No, I mean, most of everything was driven by me. <laughs> they wanted to uh, hire like a little skinny white guy, and that's what I wanted to get. So I showed up with like dreads and totally different. And no, I, I, you know, when I come to any character, it's like it's the stuff that you want to happen, and you bring your ideas. And they're, they're, those guys are great. I mean, a lot of it is them, but also that's what I put to the table. Okay, and so obviously after that, you played uh, Conan and Khal Drogo, who are also uh, tribal warriors. Do you feel like you're maybe getting a little typecast, or are you? Well, to tell you the truth, um, I mean, when you need a badass, you don't go and knock on my door. Um, do I want to play like get stuck in some like desk doing some normal? Uh, you know, uh, people get typecasted, but to tell you the truth, I love Ronan. Conan is a true honor to play Robert E. Howard. I mean, that's I feel like Frank Frazetta was. Both my parents were painters, and I loved the Frazetta paintings. When I saw that image when I was a child, it was like it was like when I saw Vader at Walgreens. I was like. Holy shit, you know what I mean? Like, it just <laughs> seared on my memory. And uh, it was an honor to play that. And then Call Drogo, there's never, ever been anything like that on TV, ever. So it's like, yeah, put me in the... Uh, you can me. I love playing those guys. So, I mean, obviously I'm not going to, you know, try not to go play too many roles right now doing that. But uh, I think those... I hit the pinnacle of those characters. Very high-level characters. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, she was good. Good night for moderate panel. Yeah, that's going to be hard to follow. Um, when you first got casted on Baywatch, did you ever imagine that you would end up here? I wasn't on Baywatch. What are you talking about? <laughs> and you're the wrong guy, lady. Security? <laughs> Call the show, sweetie. And yes, I always knew I would be here. No hugs. We can't have any physical stuff. He'll kill you. Trust uh, me. Maybe that's the way out. <laughs> Sorry. I have to be the heavy. Go. Um, I actually started watching you with North Shore, and I was wondering uh, after doing that and then going to Vancouver and to um, Morocco with all the other shows, where's the Where's your favorite place? Would you go back and do another show in Hawaii, another show in Vancouver? You know, my next show that all well, the team show me and Joe are pitching is designed for Hawaii, so I'd always love to go back there. And, and um, it's just great to represent my people, too. So, I mean, there's not too many Hawaiian actors. So, uh, I would definitely enjoy Hawaii. My favorite place, though, I mean, I really enjoyed being in Ireland. Ireland was fantastic. I could live there for, you know, it was. Well, Ireland has palm trees, so you're good. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I mean, Ireland's probably my favorite so far. Well, I like Chanton North Shore, and I think you should definitely do a romantic comedy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Talent scouts, take note. Is there one over there? I yes, think so. there is. Okay. You're on. Hi. I, I've been a fan of uh, Conan since I was very young. I'm, well, I didn't disappoint you. Back in the 70s, I was a fan of Conan, and I first started reading the Robert E. Howard books. Uh, and mostly, I just wanted to say thank you very much for bringing Conan to life. The first time I saw you as Ronan, I fell in love with the thought of you being Conan. And then when I found out you were going to be, I did the happy dance around the house. <laughs> I did the happy dance too. Good. Well, my other question was, was could a fat old lady who's a big fan get a hug? <laughs> We gotta do no we'll be hugs. Going out hugs over there. We'll be yeah. all night. I'm thank sorry. You very much. All right. Thank you very much for bringing the characters to life so well. Thank you, sir. I have a question. Are we getting more Conan? Go like no, this. No, I uh, probably not, unfortunately, because no one really went and watched it. What the hell, people? So normally studios like people to watch their movies. I think it did and, pretty uh, well overseas. As what's well. that? It did pretty well internationally. Yeah, in Russia. Accounts? I mean, it's a big, yeah, it's pretty big. We're not a lot of people there. Stuff. And then uh, Canada, it did pretty well, but the state side, it didn't do very well. So I don't think though, and it's also kind of, um, you wouldn't want to do it again if they didn't put all into it unless it did well. So it's a, it's a big bummer because I think we did, you know, we tried our best. So. Okay, so I first saw you on Stargate and I absolutely fell in love with Ronan. And then when I found out you were playing Caldrogo, I too did a little happy dance and stuff. 
And so my question is, if you could guest star on any show, what would you want to guest star on? My favorite show of all time is Saturday Night Live. <laughs> I mean, I want to, that's, that's my dream come true. Fuck the Oscars and that shit. I mean, my dream, you see me up on Saturday Night Live, my face is going to hurt so much. I'm not even going to talk. We'll be right back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Saturday Night Live would be, um, it's, um, gosh, if I could go back, the show's not on anymore, but Arrested Development. I, I like, like I said, we don't have a TV, but we, I bought the box set, and um, someone told me it was amazing, and I was really sick, and man, I laughed myself better. Like, I didn't need any medicine, I just laughed and laughed and laughed, and it, it was fantastic. I know. Thank you. I know. Hi. Khaleesi. Are you? <laughs> no? Maybe next con. Maybe next con. That's a good idea. Uh, big fan. My whole family is a giant fan. My daughter is probably crying right now because she knows I'm not here. Okay. I know she um, Thank you so much for bringing so much depth to the badasses that you play. A lot of times they're kind of shallow people and you make them really deep and, you know, we really appreciate that. I'm so proud of you and being married to Lisa when we found all this out after we got addicted to Stargate because of you. Um, just so happy. So, yay. Um, I have a two-part question. Thank you, sure. um, One, I'm really interested in, like, going through something and, and being fearful of it but getting over it. So, I did hear in one of the interviews that you touched on it today about the, the horses. So knowing that you're so scared and they don't like you, you have to do a lot of scenes with them. How did you find it in yourself to do it? Acting. Uh, <laughs> actually, I'm actually acting. pooping my pants on some of those carnage shots. Like, um, it looks like I know what I'm doing. I don't. That's really good acting. People are like, ah, it's easy. I'm like, no. I, I mean, I literally died. I almost died. That horse is huge. Um, when I first saw him, he was a Dutch Frisian. I got on him, and he just reared up. He reared up. And I'm like, we should probably try walking first. Uh, don't you think? And he's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. I'm like, oh, man. And so we start riding in, the, in, the, in, this, in this pen, and uh, he just takes off. And they have to like chase me down. And I'm like, all of a sudden I feel it shift, and I'm like going to mock 20, man. I'm just like, it's just like calm, but I'm like going, there's other horses coming at me, and I'm pulling back on this guy's ranch, and I just grab his hair, and I'm just ripping it back, and he just, they have to pin it, and I go flying over the ranch, off that big horse. I get off, I'm like, done, good, I'm, I'm, no, no. And uh, they got me back on, I'm an idiot. <laughs> and sure enough, he does it again, he bucks me off, and he just didn't like me, and we had a hard time, but towards the end, we started, it got better, but then, there's a big, big, big carriage scene, if anyone saw Conan. There's one guy back there, I think. Um, <laughs> and I pull out this uh, sword, and then basically I'm, running, I'm chasing down this carriage. And uh, I'm really connected with the horse and having a great time. And it's like not rocky terrain. If I fall, it's going to be fine. And I see this, and it starts to rain. And I just kind of get this like wild hair in my ass. And I'm like, we call it cut. And I'm like, yeah. And it's like, I'm in the rain. And it's like, and also it turns to hail. It starts to <laughs> hail. And uh, so then the smile stopped, and then I, there's like, I'm gonna go stop, and there's this grassy, um, you know, this grass field. I'm like, all right, surely this horse sees the ditch that's in front of us, and it's just small, it just divots down like that. I'm like, I can see it, and uh, it's all. The horse says, never call me Shirley. What's that? The horse says, I don't see the ditch, and don't call me Shirley. Yes. Yeah. So we're coming next, and all of a sudden he loses his front feet, and I go sliding right down his head. Right off of his head, I literally to my, it didn't hurt at all, but I like slide onto my knees and I'm sliding in the grass and I turn back and I see its ass. <laughs> it's coming up and I'm like sliding out and the whole, the, the, the uh, four wheeler with the second, uh, second unit director and the stunt coordinator and the cameraman are all like this. Like, their fucking eyes, or their jobs flashing in front of their eyes. Like, and I just slide out and it just goes, it misses me by it. Two feet, two feet, this huge Dutch Frisian ass. <laughs> I ain't going out like that. It's like going out like that or getting hit by a hybrid. It's like, hell no. If I go to the pearly gates, I'm like, send me back! I'm not going out by a Prius, man. 
And it was, uh, it, I went to my trailer, I locked it, I cried, I called my wife, I started smoking a cigar, and I drank half a bottle of scotch. <laughs> and that day was a wrap. I was like, nope, not coming out. <laughs> I was on the fucking horse the next day. <laughs> Straight up almost died. It was, it was, it was scary, man. I thought getting killed Modern Warfare was bad, but that sounds worse. Yes. Was that a two-part question? Yeah, a... I'm just wondering, is it okay to know what your tattoo says on your right arm? Yeah, it says Etro Tushu Ivo, which is like a Charles Baudelaire poem. It's my favorite poem and favorite poet. Uh, it means always be drunken. <laughs> With, with life, with poetry, with virtue. <laughs> Always be drunk. And don't necessarily have to do it, but it's just be happy in a different way of saying it. Throw out a couple writers that you enjoy since you seem to be very well read. Or stuff you're reading now. Who am I? I haven't been reading too much lately. Who am I reading now? Who am I reading now? Who am I reading now? I mean, my favorites are um, Edgar Allan Poe, is one of my favorites. That Raven Joe looks good. Yeah. And, um,. Arthur Rimbaud and Charles Baudelaire, and I love Japanese haiku poetry, so I mean like Basho and Abiyokin. It's like... All right, the Renaissance, man. Uh, very sorry to cut you off there, but uh, so the obligatory what-if battle question, uh, your rendition of Conan versus your version of Drogo, who wins in a fight? No, they always ask this, and it's funny. Uh, it's basically like taking a lion Put him in a room and then taking a fucking silverback and put him in a room. Who's gonna win? They're both gonna kill each other. I, mean, I don't think anyone's getting out alive. If Ronan has his blaster, he'll win. Ronan. Without a blaster, Ronan's screwed. Were you bigger in either role, like physically? Yeah, I was. I put on 50 pounds for Drogo and about 25 to 30 for Conan. Why don't you tell people, because I don't think they have a good appreciation of this, how long it takes to put on 50 pounds of muscle. Well, no, it's not. The Drogo, it's just like, I did Conan first. I got, it's weird, I did the pilot for for uh, Game of Thrones, and then I went and shot Conan, and then I came back and finished the whole series. So, I got in really, I had to get really ripped, so it's like, I just had, uh, you know, boiled chicken breasts every two hours. It's, yeah, it's, like, even at night when you're sleeping, you wake up and eat chicken breasts? Yeah. Think about that. 4 a.m. Yeah, chicken breast. I don't eat chicken. Because you're working out. How many hours a day? You wake up and eat. What's that? How many hours a day are you working out? I don't work out at all. Anymore. No, no. I mean, for yeah. for for Conan and Drogo. Yeah. Uh, for Conan, it's like six hours a day. Six hours a day. Yeah. It's pretty tough. Did yeah. you have like a gym membership? <laughs> You had, a, you had a bow flex. I thought he was going to be off stage at a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hurtful. Get the cane. <laughs> um, yeah, about six hours. And then I, for, for Drogo, I just shouldn't have abs, you know. I mean, he doesn't, he's not doing sit-ups. He's crushing girls and crushing bruise, you know what I mean? He's king, so I just wanted to put fat on top of that muscle, which was great. No more chicken breast. After doing, like, sick, you know, Conan and just eating boiled chicken breast, I just went to Italy and was like, Pasta. <laughs> Pasta, no shit, is a drug. It is, man. I'm like, man, I'm like, I feel like I'm on smack them all. Like, Not that I know what that's like, but I'm like, oh, man, feels so good. Butter and pasta, serious, that's all I need. Very, very delicious. Over there, sorry. Um, what's your favorite memory from shooting Game of Thrones? My favorite. I just my favorite moment, because there's, there's, there's many, many, and uh, I drank so much that I forgot all of them. But uh, I, the, one that really, the one that sticks out is um, the day where I got to do that speech, because it was the highlight of my career. Like, when I read the book, I knew he was going to deliver those words in the big speech, um, and just to be able to do it in foreign language, and around this fire, and all the people cheering, it was just like, it was a great um, moment. It's, an actor to, to do something like that and get it was just fantastic. I wanted to do it over and over and over and over again. Did, I'll do it right now. No. <laughs> they would accept it. He was bluffing. If light the fire. 
if would, would that bleed into your normal life? Like, would you get off set, go to a bar, and be like, I'm gonna rip everyone here up? It does. <laughs> it does, right? Man, like, you, you open some channels. Like, yeah. <laughs> Conan was interesting because what I did for the, so the I mean, there's a lot of things I did for the character, but one that stuck out is, um, I, you know, I didn't see my wife for two months. It's the longest I've ever, you know, it was really, really hard not seeing the kids, but. When I first started, it was great because that was a lot of my action stuff. And uh, I would put up this, all these Rosetta paintings on. And I had this little makeup artist from Bulgaria. She's cute. Um, her name was Sophie, and she was just the nicest little grandma, pretty. And uh, my big makeup wall was just all these badass guys and like Rosetta paintings, and there's just naked women everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Because I just, and I listen to Pantera. I literally wake up, be like, my alarm clock's like, dun 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 like, yeah. We got pissed, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I can't wait to start the day! <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> literally every time we roll up the set, you just open the door, it's like, da 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 Theme song. So, uh, I would listen to this heavy metal music, and no one could be around my trailer, because all these other people were like, oh, it's so early, and blah, 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 but I just had to be like, you know, full on. And, uh, the naked women helped with the frustration, because I couldn't, you know, it was like a boxer. No wife. No wife there, no way to so I was just always like, oh my god. I need a bagel. I need a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> so it made me very frustrated. So that was that, that helped me like that, that was just helping unleash the inner rage in me. Yeah, that would make someone very angry, I guess. Yes. Also helped in that rape scene that I had to do. Love Which it. is the good news, that was actually really hard, we'll get into that since I've already just opened the fucking door, idiot. Yeah, um, might as well. We're here. I've never, We're here. Uh, <laughs> By the way, I'm sorry about cussing. I'm, I have a foul mouth. I'm sorry, children. Don't be anything like me. It's a horrible habit. Um, but I've never done a love scene um, until these two things came out. And uh, Drogo was really, really challenging because I'd never... Normally, when I make love, people like it, and I like it. Everyone Not every time, it. but I mean like... It's on the record. Um, Everyone's in the room. cry. When I and so it was really, 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 really hard, and she did a great job. But that was like, that was hard. But the good news is, I'm like, I know I'm not a rapist. <laughs> I got no pleasure out of it. The more you know. <laughs> Until I watched it, and I was like, Ooh, man. That's hot. <laughs> so maybe I don't know. Now I'm looking. Now I'm so confused. Now I'm hoping for the cane. I'm hoping for the cane comes out. That's horrible. I think Someone we're, forgive me off this stage. You only got 15 minutes left. I swear. <laughs> okay, I was wondering, before you heard about them casting Conan, how familiar were you with that character? I'm sorry, uh, say Before you were cast for Conan, how familiar were you with the character? I was familiar with the comic books and with Robbie Howard stories. I had, to that point, I hadn't watched the original Conan's because it came out, I think it was like one year old. And uh, I was raised by a single mother who liked Rear Window and Gone with the Wind. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of raping and pillaging going on in my house. <laughs> so oh, I, didn't, we didn't, I didn't see Conan and, um, you know, I didn't see Rocky until like I was in like a senior in high school. Like we just didn't watch those things. My mom was like watching Birdcage. <laughs> um, Manson was known. Yeah. The other question I had is, you, you've done things like Stargate where it's a series where you have the writers there and... <laughs> So and, I just fucked with the camera guy. And, and they're, they're like writing as you're going, and then you've also done like Conan and Game of Thrones where they're books that it's based on. Which do you prefer? Or, yep. or what are good parts and bad parts of each? Um, I mean, it's, it's great to have the book. I mean, uh, I think George R. Martin was the best because um, there was, there was room to move around a little bit, and it was just written so well, it's great, you knew what was going to happen, but it's, it's, that, that was nice. Conan, there's so many stories, but we didn't have a script. If that was one of the problems that fit, like, it was just, that was a bummer. With Stargate Atlantis, it was great, because it was already, I came in on second season, there's already this world created, and I just got to play a character that came into it, and, uh, I mean, and the writers were great. I had a, I had a ball plan, um, Ronan, you know what I mean? Every every time I got a script, it was always hilarious. Me and Joe would go to the bar, and I'd be like, I'd go, <laughs> I'd go through it, I'd be like, give me a week. Before the beer came, I'd be like, no, yes, die. All right, I'm good. 
Joe's like, you're such an asshole. I'm like, yeah. He's got to study. I'm like, all right, buddy. Time to go home. Stay up. Don't wait up for me. So do you have a great memory? Is that what you're... You have a great memory, like you memorize your lines that quick? Well, with Ronan, you know, he only had two lines of that's, episode, yeah, so... That's, that's, uh, yeah, forget that was, that was trying to be funny. Um, and then, um, but yeah, that's one thing that actually I am good at. Like, I'm bad at a lot of things, and I'm pretty bad in school, but I could memorize because I was really a good cheater. you like... <laughs> well, yeah, you learned a new language. Clearly you yep. have some, some skills. When they're paying you, it's amazing what you can do with work. <laughs> I mean, the cliche things, Brando is amazing. He's one of my favorites. Uh, people now is, I mean, Daniel Day Lewis is um, just unbelievable. Um, really love him. Gary Oldman. Um, I actually just, I'm really bummed. I almost had Gary uh, in my movie that I'm doing right now. He's going to play the villain. But he can't. He's going to do another movie. We have the same agency, and uh, I wrote it for him. Um, he plays this the cop in this movie that I'm directing, and uh, he's my favorite. I love him. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Jeffrey Wright's amazing. Philip Seymour Hoffman. I think Benicio's really great because there's not too many. I mean, there's guys like half, half white, you know, basically a hoppo. Um, Benicio's really, really cool. So, thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. Hi, Jason. How's it going? Hey, how you doing? No, not too bad. Uh, first off, I can say you're a vamp. You're just the, the shit, man. No, hands down. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Guy knows his stuff. Right. Um, uh, uh, I had two questions really quick. Um, my first question is, after the like the rape scene when they cut, like what like what was like the next thing? Was there just like an awkward silence? Did you guys like be like, hey, I I'm, just be like, like, I'm so sorry, dude. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I love you because we're really good friends. You know, what I mean, and like I'm trying to make it as comfortable as possible. But literally, I'm like, they come running in and get addressed. Them. She's like, no, it's fine, it's fine. Like, she just wants to stay in it, so she doesn't. But I'm like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, ready, we're rolling, we're ready. I'm just like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm like, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> like a Tasmanian devil. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I tried to ease up on her, like the, the scene where I walk in and I'm naked. She's like, my butt. Um, they, uh, I brought I bought a bunch of funny socks, like, fuzzy, fuzzy. <laughs> Fuzzy pink uh, polka dot sock, and I put it on. Like I'd walk in, she's like laying there, and she just starts. You see her face get really wide and grin, and she's like, "What are you doing?" And she starts laughing, and I'm like, "What are you laughing at?" What are you doing? And so they're like, "Cut, come on, cut, come on, we need to do this." I'm like, "I'm the one fucking naked, man. We can take as much time as we have to. I'm gonna laugh right now because I feel uncomfortable." <laughs> It is winter in Belfast. It is cold in the Titanic building. It is freezing. I mean, I wasn't looking bad or anything. I'm just saying I was cold. All right, we're running low on time, so let's speed round it. I think we're over here. Hopefully, it's a true false. Oh no, unfortunately not. Okay. Um, well, I had to say that I was I was upset first that uh, two other ladies stole my thunder and asked for hugs because. I'm wearing my Khaleesi shirt today, and I cosplayed as Daenerys at San Diego, complete with bloody horse heart. Oh, that was you! Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love you, you're great. Thank you. Um, so my question, just uh, as a kind of funny one, was if we could bring Drogo back as a centaur, would you be up for it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it fits the character. That works. He's a beast. That's close to true false, not bad. Speak, speaking of Belfast, one of the shows I'd love to see you in is Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. I would I'd love to be, because I mean, you'd be the badass friend, of all and then obviously my dad's in it. Yeah. Um, Ron Perlman, for the people that didn't watch Conan. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. We're actually doing a motorcycle movie right now, though. It's pretty cool. It's no Sons of Anarchy, but they actually shot that, like you were saying, in Belfast. It was pretty cool, and they rolled up. I love watching them. Is it right here? My question is, should the new owners of MGM ever decide to make the Atlantis movie, would you come back? Yeah, I would, actually. <laughs> it has to be a hell of a lot more me, you know what I mean, though? Okay, right, so SG-1 and Atlantis kind of follow the same formula. There's the intellectual 
there's the military man, and then there's the. There's always the black alien. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> aliens and the black darkies and the aliens. So, did you ever feel like you had some really big shoes to fill after Christopher Judge? Really? He's got really big hands. He's probably got really big shoes. I'm bigger. <laughs> Boy, he's got bigger than me is a bigger head. <laughs> Hope he's not back. He is. I think he's next panel. <laughs> I love you, Chris. I'm just playing. <laughs> Seriously, though. You seen the jaw on that guy? I couldn't knock him out of the way. Are we, are we, was that, Sorry. Was that rap? All right. Very good. Okay, so this isn't really a nerdy question, but um, I'm from Hawaii too, and I was just wondering if you had a favorite place, like favorite beach or favorite island or anything like that. Favorite island's Kauai. Thank you. Yep. If you want to see me in my old age, that's where I'll be. <laughs> um, weird. Um, also, uh, my favorite beach is Makaha. That's where my family beach. So, I'm from the west side of Oahu, and it's, it's my family beach. You know? okay, thank you. You're welcome. I think we may have one more right there. I was just wondering, because of the nature of Game of Thrones, there's a lot of actors that you never get to work with um, when you're in the show. Was there any, was there, who would you want to work with, I guess, uh, that you didn't get to from Game of Thrones, if you could Oh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, sorry. Um, I don't want to work with you at all. I mean, I mean, Peter Dinklage is awesome. I would love those two to meet. It would be a really funny scene. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just rolling up, looking down at him, and be like, Do I eat you? Or do I do other things to you? And he's just like, What are you looking at, big man? We should write it in there. Thank you so much for your time, Jason. Thank you, everyone. I think we all enjoyed it.